Partnerships and relationships are not as hard to do as people. You can see that line. So I'm going to talk about the, the why in, in the YMCA, why we did what we did. I think Lizanne's really set the scene of, uh, of a lot of that. Uh, when I go down there now, one of the things I really love is just seeing the activity in the building, seeing the way it's used. As Lizanne said, there's a lot of things going on and you'll see people going to the cafe, you'll see another group of people going to an exhibition, you'll see some mad artists going through the middle, you'll see people in dinner suits going to a function over there. That's what I really love it about. It's all that activity that's in that building there. Um, these, are the, these are the key objectives that we established at the beginning. Essentially, Lizanne set these up. They're pretty simple. Equity of access, so anybody can, whether in a wheelchair or pushing a baby through the building, can get through the building. Lizanne described how it was, didn't really work before. Coherent circulation through the building, so you really don't have to find your way. You're just flowing. You're flowing from George Street, Circular Quay. You get your information at reception and you go straight up through a lift through the building. Really easy circulation through the building. Dedication, educa dedicated education spaces. There's a whole wing, the National Set of Creative Learning with a 120 seat theatre, so that those spaces are dedicated for learning activities. Flexible gallery spaces. The MCA had and desired gallery spaces that are quite simple spaces because from what you've seen, most of the spaces are reconfigured for the exhibition. It's not just putting two-dimensional works on the walls, rebuilding walls, making immersive spaces, having projections in it. So it's really providing for us to provide the spaces that are flexible and that they, it didn't restrict what they, had to, they did in the spaces. Uh, improving venue optimisation means that, as Lizanne said, they have to raise most of their funds, so we had to provide venues within the site or spaces within the site that could be used for leasing out. There's uh, two venues on the top of the old building that people can lease that out for weddings, parties, anything you like up there. And then there's the, uh, the cafe that's open during the day that can be used at night and almost any space in the building. So looking for those opportunities and thinking that this is in such a key spot, anybody that uses that space, there's the view of the city, the bridge, everything outside. So it's a great spot connected to all the transport. The final thing there is the uh, contemporary signifier. Really important that the building read as a, uh, a museum of contemporary art. And I think you'll agree the old building didn't. It was an Art Deco building, it was an administrative building, a building that really wanted to show its might and its strength. Well, that's not quite what the MCA is on about. So somehow we had to create a building that said, when you're walking down the street, oh, that's got to be the MCA. And added to that, we had some quite big signage onto it. So those are the key things that we had to, uh, to tackle. So the, the scheme that we came up with for circulation had to be a dead simple one. George Street's on a different level to Circular Quay, and that's the big line through the middle. So we had to get a system that anybody could enter the building and not think one's the back of the building. So we created this street through the building, that's the big red line. And if you, if you look at the rocks, you'll see that the rocks have streets that run along the contours, and then between the streets are little pedestrian access ways. Have a look, there are hundreds of them, absolutely hundreds. I'm still finding more and more of them. And it's really nice because you, when you see one, it's a way down through the water, views through the water too. So we adopted that here. Between the two streets, we put our pedestrian access right through the middle, bit of the middle, middle of the middle of the building. What that does is that gets you to the vertical rise. So you come in from either side, you get your information, your bearings, and then you go up through the building through a, a lift or a stair that takes you up to the top, and then you go into the old building. Other constraints were on the western side of the rocks, we've got the historic um, rocks, small pieces, small buildings, very historic, um, contrasted to the side we were on, uh, 1950s, built in the 1950s building, the 1932s, the police, quite a different scale on our side of the street. So we didn't think it was out of place to have a building that essentially came up to the, the top of these boxes and the police building, that's what we built up to and also a contemporary building there. So you, you respect one side and then you build up on, on this side of the road there. Then looking at, the, looking at the building itself, the old building, you can see it's a very symmetrical building. You've got the vertical core, you've got a, a, a sort of a box at each end and one through the middle. And to me, my interpretation of that was somebody wanting to say something very strong about the Maritime Services Board. Now that's not what Lizanne's vision was. Hers was more about being inclusive, people coming in and Hence, we took the big boxes of the old building 
and did them in a, in a, in a, a more scattered version for the MCA. And we could use that to our purposes to push things around to get um, facilities where we wanted them. That's the, uh, remember me saying on this site to respect the height, so we've, re we've picked up the height of the MCA, picked up the height of the building, that's roughly the height that we fit in with there. Um, we also respected the buildings either side, so there's a gap between us and the old MCA, there's a gap between the police building, and we've used those to our advantage to be able to get views in and out. This one's the main circulation stair, so when you walk up or down through the building you're seeing back in and out of the rocks there, and you're ex experiencing that old facade. Uh, there's, that, there's that entrance right through the centre of the building, uh, so you can see right in, you can see um, up through the void in the space, you can see reception, we're up, we've come up to that, that entry level, you can see the shop, you can see up through the building, to, again to invite you through. Um, at this point here I'll just talk about the ceilings because the, the external boxes turn inside into the building, we tried to make it a seamless a seamless inside and outside, it just continues through and that's a part of the inclusivity of the building that the space just flows through, the glass just happens to be there to keep the weather in, in and out. So here are these boxes coming in, the outside turns to the inside. Now we use that again to our advantage because in it we could put all the air conditioning ducts, we could put all the lighting in it and the only things that are visible, there's a couple of bits of, on it that need to be there, um, heat detectors and those things, so all the lights out of the way. There's no lights that get in your eyes there. And we really could use that to our advantage because the ceilings are very low, but we could push it up where we didn't need air conditioning. In some areas, you can see it down the middle, we pushed it right up to the concrete so we could get the most out of those areas there. So it's, a, it's a, like a design system that we really use to our advantage. Just have a look at that circulation on the left of the lifts. We had the opportunity of having a glass lift there. So when you're going up, you're, you can see out through to Sydney Harbour there. Um, and that lift, and the stair here was all about having relief from gal the galleries. You're looking at works, you're taking it in, then you're coming out to go to the next level, you're seeing what the day is doing, where you are, taking in the city, then you go into the next one. So it's, it's relief from what you've seen. In the lift, uh, it's a, a glass lift, so you go, uh, you see, you see the, uh, the view outside. On uh, level three is the National Centre for Creative Learning, that's beyond this uh, this line here, there are sort of different levels of child protection in it, so it can be used in different ways. Uh, so doors can be closed, and then inside, we were allowed to put some brighter colours in there to uh, to uh, make enliven the space. And but you'll see it's the same, pretty well the same as the outside and the ceilings. They're boxes. This is a box, block of toilets. This is a service room, and so on. It's an education room. We keep those colours identifying rooms. So throughout the building. There are the function space, there are spaces that have something and then all the rest of it is just the open space between it, which is much as what a city is. The open space, urban space is the gap between the buildings. Two workshops, there's a wall that can go down through the middle and all in this room, you can see there's uh, like wet facilities down the far end and uh, it's all got projectors, it's all connected up incredibly with technology. Uh, the walls in here are a pinboard material, a recycled pet bottle material and so you can pin anything on the walls. So we want these spaces to be really useful for their educators. Uh, 120 seat theatre, um, which uh, these spaces are all wired up so that there could be a lecture in the foundation hall, which could be shown in this room. Children could be cutting it up in that digital classroom. It could be projected out to Central Australia. It could be projected around the world. So that connectivity is quite amazing what's been, what's been set up. Um, within the spaces we reconfigured a lot of the old galleries with new floors, this is actually a new gallery, but throughout we put new floors through because the old ones were failing. Really simple walls so that the, uh, the MCA could use them. This one has, uh, is top lit but it's actually the, it's blacked out at the moment and that's one of the taller galleries in the spaces. Uh, the forecourt being used, which are, to me that's what it's all about, people out there using it and um, the forecourt's up here, people are using, uh, and uh, it, it's a people space. Uh, and in vivid, the way that um, uh, the building was used as a projection screen. I think there you can see the way that it fits into the rocks. It's sort of broken down in pieces, but it really is a strong building. It's a strong contemporary signifier. Um, and um, uh, I don't think you'd have it anywhere else because it's, it's, it's so central for everything. It's a part of Sydney. And I think people are realising that now. It was great also to get the, the, all, the, all the foreshore from this point 
um, redone. So there's a massive expanse of grass there that people can sit on, can be used for artwork. There's plenty of seating there, and then there's the forecourt. So nice that that part is being resolved because that was originally a street. Then I think it was 1988 that was turned into the pedestrian passage through there, and things have moved on since then. So we've recognised that and, and just made bigger spaces that can be used um, for other things. I'll hand over to Glenn.